So my name is Vaith Trith and I'm a research scientist at NASA Ames Research Center in the Earth Sciences Division. So we were really honored to have Dr. Sylvia Earle come and visit us to talk about oceans and really NASA's role in understanding climate change. We've been looking at the wrong place. We've been looking at the land and we've thought that this is what's driven the climate. And if you look at the Earth from afar, it's not green, it's blue. Um, and really it's that, it's that ocean that drives, that 70% of our, our planet is covered by that ocean that drives our climate, it drives our ecosystems, it drives diversity. My PhD research topic is in fluid lensing, and the idea is to be able to look through fluid. So what does that mean? Um, the best example I can think of is if you have a friend standing behind a waterfall and you're trying to, to figure out who that person is, your brain, after a few minutes of looking at them through that waterfall, will actually be able to form a picture of who that is. And you'll probably very confidently be able to say, this is Sally. Um, and you're doing that because your brain is really doing a lot of advanced computation in the background. So one is your, you have a, a time history independent view of that target. So when you're looking at that person, you're remembering events where the water was clear at some point, and you're seeing a feature, an eye, maybe a nose. And over time, you're slowly building up a picture of what that person looks like. Between you and that person, there's a lot of complicated physics going in between you. There's, there's optics that's going through that water. The water may not be you know, well behaved. There might be bubbles. All these different things are going on. So what I have tried to do with fluid lensing is remove that problem. When we look through the Earth's atmosphere or we look through the ocean surface, we have the same issues. We have a turbulent, time-evolving surface that's, that's blurring our view. And essentially what I'm trying to do is utilize that surface as part of your telescope or your eye or your optic. So rather than putting the camera through the surface, you keep the camera above the surface and you use it as a lens. So as I see a wave pass over a target, I see the magnification and I watch and I track it on my um, high frame rate cameras. And then that is saved to a matrix that then creates an image of whatever is behind that surface, but is at higher resolution and magnifications than you could use if you did not have that fluid there. So in a way, what was originally sort of an, a problem, that you had this fluid in the way of what you're seeing, has now sort of actually helped you enable to see what's beneath that surface. Personally, I would like to see it applied to to assessing you know, where we are in the oceans. We, we don't have any maps of reefs. We don't know what we're, we're losing. And so without that measurement, you really can't say you know, how the climate is changing because you have no baseline. So I think the first step um, that NASA's really expressed an interest in is, is developing airborne and spaceborne assets to then generate that first map. Landsat is, a, is an excellent example of a data set that has gone back 40 years that's consistent over almost the entire planet at multiple frequencies. And so when someone asks us, you know, justify a claim on climate change, you know, you have a 40 year data set to provide them that shows very clear evidence of warming. So we want to create that same type of data set for all the shallow um, reef ecosystems on Earth, which is, you know, there's 70% of the Earth is water, so we have a lot more work to do than Landsat even had to do. And just generate that baseline, that's, that's the first step. The second step is then to take those technologies further. So we either take them to places like Titan or Europa that we know have potential liquid oceans at the bottom and understand how we can image and use them to enhance our understanding of, of those potential astrobiology hotspots.